But the gray rhino is, is a metaphor for the big scary thing with a horn coming right at you. It might be still pawing the ground and snorting, or it, it might be already uh, running your way. Um, but it's a metaphor for something that, that gives you a choice. Um, it's gray because there are two of the five rhino species that are black rhinos and white rhinos, and neither one of them is the color that they're called. They're both actually gray. So it's a metaphor for, for how prone we are to ignore obvious things. But it's different from uh, its cousin, the elephant in the room, because that, by definition, is something that nobody does or says anything about. It sort of normalizes the idea of doing nothing. And the gray rhino is something that someone is saying something about, and sometimes a lot of people. Um, but you're still, you know, putting your hands over yours, going la 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 la. la. I don't, I don't want to hear it. What makes the difference when, when you see the big thing coming at you? What's the difference between people who do something and the ones who don't? So uh, I wanted a way to really talk about that and expand the concept to uh, to other areas, to you know, go corporate strategy, uh, to broader policy issues like uh, like climate change or inequality. Uh, and since the book came out, I've been very surprised by how people are applying it to their personal lives as well. Well, so I came up with the with the five stages as a way to help answer the question, you know, why why aren't we doing something, and how can we do a better job of dealing with it? Um, the first one is denial, which is what it sounds like. Um, usually, by the time someone has me come to talk to them, they're they're kind of beyond that. <laughs> but they might be worried about getting other people to go beyond denial. And we've seen so much of that uh, in the COVID situation, particularly in the United States. I mean, we 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 saw what was happening in China. We saw what was happening in Italy. They were, you know behind closed doors briefings where senior members of the government were told, hey, watch out for this. Um, and then they, they, they didn't uh, do anything. The, the public stage was denial. You know, in some cases that was so that these, these government officials could unload their stocks before everybody else did, um, which is a big, big problem. Um, but so the second stage is, um, is muddling. That's when you admit that there is a problem, but you have, 4,372 reasons why you're not going to deal with it. And, you know, I think Europe gets accused of muddling quite a bit. Um, and there's, there's something to that. I mean, there's their efforts to build a consensus to get a lot of people behind a project. So the political will is, is often uh, a big reason for muddling. Um, you know, sometimes you can be strategically muddling, uh, whereas you know you've got to get certain preconditions dealt with before you can solve a problem. The third stage is diagnosing. And that's when you switch from the, the muddling mode, which is, this is why we can't solve the problem, to what does it take to solve the problem? You know, who do I need to do what? What are the resources I need? How am I gonna get the resources? Um, analyzing the nature of the problem. Is this something you can solve on its own or do you have to solve a couple of other things with it? Uh, we've seen a lot of conversations about the connections between uh, COVID and climate change and, um, you know, emissions and pollution. The fourth stage is, is panic. Uh, I love to illustrate this with the, with the Edvard Munch uh, painting of the screen. Ah! And that's when everybody's running around going, do something, somebody do anything, just do something. And it's a double-edged sword. On the, on the one hand, it means you're more likely to try to solve the problem, but on the other hand, it means that unless you've really gone through the diagnosing pro process and have a really good plan, you're probably going to do the wrong thing. And then the fifth stage is actually is action. Usually you'll find a few people who are acting and what you wanna do is uh, get to that viral point where that few people rapidly scale up to many more people uh, doing something. Uh, and then you also wanna track what you're doing. Um, you know, is it helping? Is it, is it not helping? And, you know, I think we've seen that in, in many of the, the COVID situations. You know, interesting in the, in the Czech Republic, when they started uh, saying, hey, we need to wear masks, they were very successful in getting very high compliance very quickly. Uh, in, in other places, not so much. Um, so those are the, those are the five stages.